Hello and welcome to Frank's School, 132nd day, 6 year, first video, Hydra Hives. Hydra's not going to go away, but this is going to be the last video that I put in this playlist, which is now 20 videos long. Uh, it started uh, uh, in the, on the 5th of January of this year, so I've been really quite, quite at it. Now, I'm going to erase stuff, I think, as, as I say it. it. It makes it a little easier for me in a way. So Hydra... I'm not going to talk about her quite as much, but now and then I'm sure she's going to lift one of her many heads. At the beginning of the playlist, uh, I treated her as dangerous. She is dangerous, but uh, maybe I should also say now the thing is, uh, one of my comments I got on this was somebody said that there's an irony here because Hydra is now in your head. If you watch this playlist, uh, I have managed to get uh, Hydra into that person's head. And there's a lot of terms and names, that tangle of nouns. And now I, I sort of feel like I've wrestled with them. I'm comfortable with them, but now they're in your head. Gloss is going to certainly comment on, on this playlist. Gloss is the name I use for myself. As I go back through <clears throat> and reread what, or review, what I have uh, presented and, and make further comments on. So I'm going to go back and take a look at it. There will be more. And in, in saying that, that uh, Hydra will lift one of her heads, well, for example, well, first of all, off-grid. I should have put that in there as I was listing things like tiny houses, tiny house nation, um, this old house, the, the DIY, the do-it-yourself uh, channel. There's a series, there's what, Cabin, Barnwood Builders, I think, and there's Cabin Builders or something. There's also this idea of living off the grid, which is a, a sort of a more general term for people's dream to get off the grid. Once again, I really feel like you're being made a fool if you swallow that kind of stuff. Because although, what I've seen of it, although they talk about off the grid, all the lumber, all the stuff is 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 completely coming from the world of the grid. So I don't know. I, I, I also think that's cat, cat, you can't cat, you can't mess with that camera. Come on. Uh, uh, maybe, she, maybe he'll behave. Uh, all right, another thing I, <clears throat> maybe over here. As I was looking for something, I know what it was. I was looking for a book called Grow It, which was popular in the early 1970s, I think. Grow It. Uh, and I thought I had a copy, and I was looking for it. Cat, you can't mess with that camera. Uh, uh, and I couldn't find it. But in looking for it, I, I was looking for it because I'm thinking about doing an, another series now. As a matter of fact, I intend to, in which I'm going to say degrow it. Degrow degrow it and, and explain how do you go about doing that. Uh, anyway, in the process I found these books, Success on a Small Farm, Living on a Few Acres. I didn't buy these. Uh, the Farm Primer. Uh, and You know, as evidence that, that I didn't come up with this stuff, I am a product of, of my, uh, my mother especially, but others as well. This one, 1942, uh, The Farm Primer, uh, was actually when I looked inside of it to say, who, who bought this? It had my uncle's name, George Palmer. He was married to my cat, that's it. Uh, married to my, my uh, mother's sister, and uh, he and his, he was from Staten Island. He, he had no farm background really in him at all. But he was part of that in the 1940s and, and from then on, longing to get uh, back to the land. Uh, they lived their lives, really made their careers in, in Manhattan, as did, my, uh, as did my cousin, their daughter. But anyway, uh, that was his book. So um, uh, one was 1978. This was a farm. Uh, this was a yearbook of agriculture. Uh, my mother must have picked that up somewhere. Um, that cat. Uh, and then, well, whatever. <laughs> that cat has been... An issue. It, this may suddenly end with it. Let me deal with this. Cat? No. No. Go on. 
No, maybe she won't, she won't come back. Um, well, an action, an action video. Oh well, it'll make it a little different. Um, uh, all right, let's see. Ken Kearns, I forgot to mention him. Uh, owner built home, owner built homestead, and many others. He was very influential in the thinking of young people when I was young, people my age in the late 60s, early 70s. Major, how could I skip him? I, well, partly because I don't think I have his book anymore. I don't know what became of all these books. Fista, a new, uh, that's a new term. These are things that Hydra is still uh, coming up with. Worth looking at. Uh, 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 Degrowth has led me to this. It's uh, an Irish organization, Foundation for the Economics of Sustainability. Uh, I have found uh, the kind of people that I, I want to hear from and hear what they're thinking. Uh, das Volk, uh, out of all this, the terms that I'm left with is Das Volk, which was always really there. Uh, I just at a certain point realized that that's, that's the place to look. Degrowth, that was critical. Degrowth, that was not really part of my vocabulary before I got into this, I don't think. And the question remains, is that the same as decentralism? No, it's, it's not. Um, they're related. And I think of China, for example. China didn't exactly mean to degrow, but in a very centralized place, very centralized government, it, it would be possible for a centralized government to degrow. They did it unintentionally with this cultural revolution, if you want to look into the history of that and how disastrous it was. However, they did, China did degrow its population uh, in a centralized way. So uh, it's different, but centralization is still certainly going to be there. Villagism, that's something I intend to explore. And at this point, I can tell you that back when I look at all the experiments and things that were done, Back in the uh, uh, 60s and 70s, and, and even now, this, this off-the-grid, um, uh, do-it-yourself stuff, it's leaving out, for the most part, villages. It, even, even the way Americans arm themselves to shoot it out, protecting their family when the, everything goes to fluid, they're leaving village out. And, and I want to look at that more, villagism. Uh, and I did speak about that. There, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to be looking at. Well, the hippie communes, in a way, of the late '60s, early '70s, they were in a way that village impulse, but it, it really wasn't the same. Uh, just say no, degrow, is going to be. I think what I'm going to use in my head for what I'm going to turn to soon. Just say no. That was Barbara Bush. I think she said it to drugs. I say just say no to the, the, the modern culture of, of uh, consumerism. Just say no. Now, finally, uh, we're say, Hydra is hiding. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, it occurred to me she's not going to go away. But in any case, I thought of Shakespeare's sonnet number 18, the way it ends. And I think, well, that's kind of the case with this playlist. So long as men can breathe and eyes or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Hydra's not going away, as long as this playlist is available. Bye for now.